Hello, people. So the next time I see you, we're going to start to talk about um, standing waves. All right. Now, standing waves are a phenomenon that waves of all kinds really can can uh, exhibit, but they mix a whole lot of different smaller elemental phenomena. All right, and a lot of things have to go right for a standing wave to be created. So we got to make sure we formalize all these little um, kind of sub elements. Okay, so um, one of the things that is uh, that you have to have in order to create a standing wave is you have to have some reflection that happens. All right, so we'll formalize what we've talked about so far about reflection, and we'll say here comes a wave pulse. All right, wave pulse moving along something um, in some medium maybe on a string, maybe across the water, maybe a uh, sound wave pulse through the air, whatever it is, uh, this wave pulse is cruising along. And I'll say that it encounters this, what I'll call a boundary, Bound, boundary perhaps, um, between two media. All right, so maybe this, like and you saw in that simulation, maybe this string is you know, attached to the wall or held by something or connected to something or maybe um, sound is traveling in air and that sound hits a wall or, you know, whatever it is, um, a wave pulse gets to the boundary between medium one here and medium two. And what happens? Well, for sure, no matter what, part of the wave reflects which is to say it bounces back in the direction that it came from, okay? Now, what does it do when it bounces back? As you've seen, that depends. It depends on what goes on at the boundary. And the boundary can be uh, treated in one of two ways, all right? It can be treated, you know, we might draw like an open circle here, like what we call a free end or a loose end. Now, the easy thing is to literally imagine this as that wave on a string where this end can slide up and down the rod. It was looped around. Remember that in the simulation? Well, what happens there is if a crest comes in, then a crest comes back, right? And this crest then goes that way. And um, some terminology we use is we can say, well, there's no what's called phase shift here. We'll get into phase, what we mean by that more in the next slide. But if a peak is still a peak, we say that the, the wave has not changed phase. All right, but if this boundary right here, we can treat it as what we call a fixed end, an end that doesn't oscillate. Well, what happens is, as you saw, the pulse comes in as a crest, but can come back as a trough. All right, and here we get a phase, what we call a phase shift. It does change phase. Fair enough? So old news, good. All right, uh, now, here come two wave pulses. And not only that, but here they come at each other. All right, let's say that this is a crest of amplitude A. Not just a crest A, but a crest of amplitude A and a crest of amplitude B. And they come at each other, and there is an instant when at least the very peaks of those crests, or whatever you want to call them, of those pulses, their, their, uh, their exact peaks are at the same place at the same time, and we say then they are superimposed. And when they're superimposed, they interfere. Well, and the interference result is, as you saw, a bigger crest of amplitude A plus B. Okay? And this happens for an instant, and then later, well, as you saw, what happens is crest with amplitude B keeps going that way, crest with amplitude a uh, keeps going that way. So waves can interfere past each other uh, and just keep on trucking.
Okay. Now this instant here, the during, during the interference, right? Here's before the interference. Here's during the interference. Here's after the interference. During the interference, when they are superimposed, when they are actually interfering, they interfere in such a way that the two waves combine to make a bigger, in this case, a bigger crest. It could also be two troughs combined to make a bigger trough. And we say they interfere constructively. Yeah? All right, constructively like they make a bigger something, a bigger crest or a bigger trough. All right, and that can happen with wave pulses, right? Two individual pulses can interfere constructively. Two traveling waves um, can also interfere constructively. And this wave that's already on the board would interfere constructively with another wave that say, well, look like that, right? We line up peaks with peaks and troughs with troughs and peaks with peaks and troughs with troughs. And that gives us, at all instances, constructive interference. Okay? Fair enough? Good. Next. All right, here come two other wave pulses. Again, let's say a crest, uh -oh, a crest with amplitude A. A crest with amplitude A, but a trough with amplitude um, B. Well, before they interfere, let's say they're coming at each other like this. During their interference, when they are superimposed, when one is right on top of the other, the interference result is something like this. So it's a, this is still a crest, but it now has an amplitude, let's call it A minus B. Or maybe it's A plus negative B. Okay, but what we get is a crest and a trough interfere, or a cross, a, a, a trough and a crest interfere, and what we get is that they interfere in such a way that they don't combine each other's effects, but each of them takes away from the other, and we get what's called, or we say they interfere destructively. Like these waves would. Well, um, if we had a wave like that, and a wave like this, where we have crests lined up with troughs, and troughs lined up with crests, well then you get destructive interference. Oh, and of course after, I forgot this part, afterwards, right, a crest A keeps on cruising, and crest, or trough B keeps on cruising. Okay. Nothing, nothing new, just wanted to make sure we get this formalized. All right, now, <clears throat> we said a minute ago, what gives here, we talked about phase shift, all right? And we can actually talk about, you know, the phase, something about phase with these waves and something about phase with these waves. So here's what we mean when we say phase. All right, first of all, typically when we talk about um, phase, we have to use the idea that when we talk about a full wave, right, there's a full wave, or um, or even here's a full, you know, like, there's a full wave. Anytime we talk about a full wave or a full cycle or a full oscillation, we can represent that, or, or we can say that that represents, um, well, for example, two pi radians or maybe even 360 degrees. Okay, because there's a whole, a whole um, way of thinking that says going around a circle is like, you know, the kind of simplest case of a nice full cycle. All right? So, um, yeah, one way to talk about phase is to say here's a wave. And various points on that wave, like say point A, and point B, and point C, and point D, all have a difference in phase relative to the other points. 
All right. So what we can literally, what we can, what we can say there. Um, yeah. Anyway, what we can say there is, if we compare, like, say, points A and C, we'll notice that they are half a wave apart. Right? There's half a wave. Because here's the other half. Well, if they're half a wave apart, we could say that they have a phase difference of pi radians, or 180 degrees. Yeah? We could say that points like A and uh, D have a phase difference of, well, they are a full wave apart, so that would be 2 pi radians, or 360 degrees. They could have, well, let's talk about, or you can talk about, please. Why don't you tell me the phase difference between points uh, A and B? And in points, uh, let's go B and D. Tell me the phase difference in those two points. All right? It has to do with how far away on a wave they are. Okay? Notice that I said on a wave. Now, you can also talk about phase or phase difference if you talk about multiple waves. So different waves can be compared based on what we call a phase difference or how much one is shifted relative to the other or the phase shift that one shows relative to another. So if we call these like waves one and two and three, well, we could say that one and two, or two, how about we say it like this, wave two is shifted, two is a, a show, how about this, shows a phase shift of, well, compared to wave one, it shows, a, and quite literally, here's what I mean, oh wait, i got to ungroup, let me ungroup. Yeah, so it's really saying now they're lined up, right? Now they're in phase, but two was over here like this, Sh literally shifted over half of a wave. So that's a phase shift of pi radians, or 180 degrees. Right here's wave three. Wave three is shifted... Well, that's what, one quarter of a wave. So, wave three shows a phase shift of, well, that's a quarter of a wave, pi over two radians, or 90 degrees. Okay? The last thing here just talks about um, connecting the idea of interference and phase, or phase difference, right? And the easiest way to look at that is with, in, in, in these cases over here, where we say, all right, we want waves to interfere constructively, which means we want peaks to be lined up with peaks, or troughs to be lined up with troughs. Well, the easiest way is to have them just plain old like that, where they are completely what we call in phase. All right, so um, phase differences first. Well, we could have a phase difference, uh, phase difference of nothing, which we call being in phase. But we could also get these waves to interfere constructively. One and two say, if I took this one and shifted it over, well, a full wavelength. Look, now we line up peaks with peaks and troughs with troughs again. So if they have a phase difference of, I'll say, or 2 pi, 
which really is the same thing as saying 360 degrees. Or if I shifted it over another wave, another full wavelength, I could have them four pi radians apart, or 720 degrees apart, and so on and so on. All right, and if that's true, well, you'll get waves to interfere constructively. If the phase difference is really any multiple of a whole wave, any multiple of two pi radians, or any multiple of 360 degrees. Okay? But if we want waves to interfere destructively, well, we've got to line up. Here's where they're in phase right now, right? Trough lined up with trough. We want them to interfere destructively. Well, we've got to do that. Notice I shift over from, well, a trough being there to a peak being there. So that's shifted over by um, phase difference of, well, that's pi radians or 180 degrees. Now, we can't shift it over just another pi radians. Now they're back in phase. But if we did it another half, that's 3 pi radians. That'll work. Or 3 pi or 5 pi or there's a pattern there too <coughs> but the bottom line is they have to be well they can't be a full wavelength apart they got to be really an odd number of yeah an odd number of pies <laughs> an odd number of pi radians apart okay um yeah so that's that where was this like that sure I think that's it for this. Um, next time we start to talk about uh, this this idea, where instead of just single pulses that go, you know, down a in some medium and reflect backwards, and instead of just two pulses that maybe interfere with each other, either constructively or destructively, what if we? Oh, what happened there? What if? Well, what if waves just keep on traveling? in one direction but then hit an end and then bounce back and travel this way and the ones that travel this way and the ones that travel this way interfere with each other and it, it keeps happening over and over and you make things happen just right well some neat stuff can happen all right so that's what we'll talk about next time um and uh yeah we'll, we'll get in the lab soon okay Adios.